Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Daisy. Today, we are talking about how to continue having a perfect travel inland. Now, I'm off the coast. I think I'm near Nat and Zeno. What town is this? Looks like they're a little police. So, Nefka. So, I already have armor. I have an epoxy putty. I have an SK with limited ammo. And also... Ooh, I don't want to go through this. And also... I have a blaze with two bullets. This is the same character from the previous video. If you haven't seen it, how to have a perfect start inland. Um, so if I hadn't found armor, this little checkpoint here would be super valuable because of those Zeds there. Because I got a plate carrier, I'm not too worried about that. The main thing we're gonna wanna focus on today because I've joined a completely different server and I'm gonna look to do completely different things from the last video. Um, honestly, in that last video, our buddy, Harry coming across us kind of shifted my focus into uh, being present with him and tending to his needs in it in hopes that you all also would be playing and would be asking the same questions that he was actually asking okay looks like someone's trying to make something here a bunch of crowbars stash in a little base oh they have a car right here nice So where I'm at seems to be a popular area right now. I'm going to leave their car alone. If ultimately I had the pieces to make that car run, I would be actively trying to snag it up. But I don't right now, and I'm not particularly interested in getting a car. Mostly, cars are good in DayZ if you are on a server with really good ping, if you know how to drive them well, and if... Ooh, someone recently cooked in here. Alright, so I'm, I'm on someone's tail. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this town. I saw two stashes over there, and now I saw that as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and move out. I'm gonna travel through these trees this way because I know this is west right here. As you saw in the last video, I gave our ally Harry all of our loot, so all the loot I'm finding is gonna be fresh here, and we're just gonna push deeper into the map. Now, notice that I'm not running in a field. Very important. And I saw those, the remnants of players back there. All, although they were not player remnants as in a bunch of ammo dropped or something like that. It was just uh, sticks on the ground from the fireplace and the other goodies. We're, we're going to act as though we are behind someone right now. Not exactly sure where I'm at, so I'm just going to keep pushing. This way. I'm pretty sure this is west, though. So. When we are crossing a field like so, it's important that we look at the base of all of the tree line. Tree lines, essentially the further down a tree line, like the closest to the field, the trees, um, that's, that's the most common place for people to sort of camp out and try and get a shot on someone. So we always want to be cautious about checking the base of the tree line, like this area, all the way down. And essentially, we're just constantly combing those areas and making sure that they are regulated spaces in our mind. I hope to not run into anyone. If I do run into anyone this time, we're going to be doing some PvP. I hope to run into someone, but it's Shinara, so you never know. We do have limited ammo, so it's going to be a constant thing on our mind that we have to make sure our shots matter. I can't just go blasting out and waste all my ammo for a bunch of misses. So we're going to have to really time our shots here. Just a little cowboy hat if you're into that thing. Now, as we push into the map, first off, if you don't have armor, the number one thing you need to be doing is navigating yourself to an advanced military space. Now, I'll do a little overlay here and I'll talk outside of this video's context for a second here and just talk about when you spawn how you should go about finding armor boom put it in Cameron don't mess up all right so here we are on I survive I have turned on all the spawn location and all the barracks via this filter here if I turn on all the military you'll see there's a lot of military and a lot of them don't actually spawn plate carriers which is what this is all about so if I click barracks here it's going to filter pretty much locations that have a potential to spawn play carriers mostly and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to figure out where we spawn 
Okay, for example, if I spawn anywhere on the south coast, I'm going to want to navigate somewhere over here, probably. If I spawn over here, I'm going to want to push west as soon as possible. If I spawn over here, I'm not going to want to push northwest. So where we spawn, there's not really a loop path because if I spawn down here in Chernogorsk and I run this road and I tell you, yeah, run up to Nat and Zeno, you'll find sick loot. It's like, what if five people just did that before you? Daisy is an ever-evolving game. There is no loot path. There are not loot like sort of like... I don't like those like videos that are expressing, yeah, if you take this path, you'll find a bunch of sick loot. It, it's not really that way. More so, what you want to do is you want to get a general idea as to where you spawned, and then you want to push out of that area towards one of these military compounds listed with the barracks here. And then that will hopefully get you a plate carrier and equip you to survive that first shot that a stranger gets on you. Also, don't purchase this quadruple A title. So with that in mind, when it comes to pushing off of our original spawn, we have to be present in the moment thinking, where can I go that is going to give me access to one of these plate carriers? And also we need to be checking industrial units for either this epoxy putty or a leather sewing kit. Because once we find the plate carrier, to find it in perfect shape is quite rare actually, we're going to want to make sure that our plate carrier is in good condition. So we're going to want to repair it. And we repair it with either the le leather sewing kit or that epoxy putty that I just showed you. Now, I am yellow water. And I went through a couple towns. I am kind of nervous, I would say, about going in here and filling up on water. Much less nervous than I was in the previous town when I decided to ditch it. Because... The people in that previous town that had the fire that left all the remnants. Where am I? Is this boar? Am I a boar? Oh, wait. Yeah, this is boar. So where is the well and boar? I believe it's right down there. So it's very likely that, that the players could have been in that town where the remnants were. Why? Because there's remnants there. But every, every second I spend walking away from that remnant is less and less chance that I am with somebody, that I am on someone's tail. Because they could have went any number of directions from that fireplace. Chance that they're in the town? Eh, pretty low. Chance that they're in the next town over? Pretty, 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 pretty super low. Okay. Now, I believe the well is right by that house. But notice how I'm... I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm kind of doing it with my eyes. But I'm constantly looking up towards that tree line up top. I'm checking out these houses. We need to make sure that that we are the person to find our adversary first. Now, if, if, if someone spotted me first and they took a shot on me while I was unsuspecting, the chance of me winning comes down to whether or not they missed their shot, whether or not my armor holds up, right, and, and tanks the bullet, and then alongside that, whether or not I can return fire in a way that, that, that stops them. There's a well right there. That stops them from further furthering shots on me. So all of these things are a bunch of variables. What we want to do is we want to remove... Oh god, there's a runner zombie right there. We want to remove as many of those variables as possible. And what we want to do is we want to control the circumstance from the first moment it starts. Alright, looks like this well is covered in zombies. I'm going to go ahead and fill up here. Hopefully not to get sniped. Obviously, I can't control if I do. It's part of the game. But so I just came to a well. Remember what we're doing here? Before I fill up on this well, I'm going to close myself in an enclosed space, a safe spot. If there's a zombie in this room, I believe there is. I'm on someone's tail right now. So those people from the previous house, they very well may be here. And I have to act as such. So, remember, wells are the most important thing in the game when it comes to surviving from attrition, like water and liquid. Uh, food I could find anywhere, but wells are incredibly important. So because I found this well, I'm going to drink my entire water bottle. I'm going to wait, because I should maybe get a stomach symbol. Nope. So I'm going to go down right now, drink my entire water bottle again. And if I wasn't nervous about someone being in the town... I would sit here for a long while. I'd fill up a couple times. I would let my stomach completely get uh, 
completely filled to the brim with water. But because I'm kind of sketched out, there may be someone here, and I'm kind of trying to trying to chase someone and give you guys a sort of PvP instance so we could get some philosophies and some general concepts. Hopefully I don't lose my fight, right? But we're going to push out of here. Looks like I got a zombie on me there. I'm going to go ahead and just obstruct their motion. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Obstruct their motion. I think this guy's gonna gonna catch up to me. I got another one here. I'm just gonna put both these guys in this house here. Not gonna spend the time now. Now look what I'm doing. I'm, I'm making sure I'm on the opposite side of the. Oh, I should have probably used the second door there. This is a tough one to lock one in because I can't really walk out all the way. So I'm gonna have to fight here. Come on now, baby. Really bad fight there. Really bad spot to fight. Really bad fight. Want to make sure we have space, but I was trying to... Unfortunately, the ground was a little bit leveled. But So we're going to move inland. I know where I'm at now because I know the map. But if you didn't, you would be looking for a sign right, to establish your location. And you can use one of those uh, map applications. Which are, oh, heli crash. Oh, baby. All right. Let's talk about heli crashes. Let's go up here. Number one thing when we find a heli crash. Okay. We want to get eyes on the area around the heli crash. Why? Heli crashes guarantee a spawning of zombies. No zombies there. That means one of a couple things. There could be zombies in the tree line that have been killed. Jeez, there's a lot of zombies here. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's a base. There is a lot of zombies here. This is tough. Completely out of stamina here, so I'm just going to play it nice and slow. Let me get this other one in here, too. That's how I'm taking hits, and it doesn't really matter. Oh, I'm stuck. Because I got this play carrier. So that's a base right there. If I uh, find some tools, maybe I can break in there. But we're going to want to get eyes on the base of the helicopter here because... Helis will always spawn zombies. Now, if there's no zombies there, we know a couple things may have happened. One, I'm too far away and the zombies haven't spawned on the heli yet. Which I think is the case here. No, maybe not. Maybe there's someone here. Or two, there, there would be dead zombies laying next to the heli, which would tell me someone's already hit it. In which case, if I see that someone's already hit it, I don't want to loot it. I want to move past that. I don't want to focus on other things. But because I'm kind of on suspicion of people being nearby, I'm going to be extra cautious pushing in here. And this is actually in a pretty bad spot for this. But I'm going to try and get eyes from high ground down onto the helicopter. And try and get a gauge whether or not someone has already been here. Now, if I die here... I mean, maybe I won't post the video just because it hasn't been long. Oh, what was that noise? I thought I heard something. Like a gun swap. Oh, there's zombies. Okay. So now that I see zombies, I know no one has hit it. Because there would have been zombies dead on the ground there. There's no dead zombies. I'm going to look on the tree line for a second here. Because everyone could have heard this crash. I didn't hear a crash. I have no idea where this is. But someone could have heard it. Someone could be moving here now. It's always better to be at a heli crash second. It's never better to be out there in the field. We got some wolves. We got to make money moves here. And right, so because I got wolves, I'm pushing in. I can't. I can't be caught out fighting wolves and the zombies here. All right. So every heli will have one like high tier or gun spawn. So what I'm looking for here when I go to this heli is I'm looking for just a little... Okay, so we got an engrave there. We got an ump. That's really bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. We got a ghillie. We got a moss mag. Nothing. There's, that is a what we call in the streets. That is a terrible heli crash. Now we're out in the open with a bunch of zombies. Now you see the danger with helis. <laughs> We're going to go down here. Hopefully this one isn't built on as well. 
It may be. I don't know. I, so I could shoot all these zombies, but then that leaves me with no bullets, right? And notice how I'm putting my gun away. I'm running with my gun. I'm putting my gun away, and then I'm blocking all the attacks. I'm trying to block every single attack that comes my way, getting my stamina back. We're back on it. Now, I could sit here and try and kite all them in, but, oh, looks like I have to. Normally what I would want is I would want to shut every door, except for one like I have here. Okay, we're getting a little stamina boost, boop. and we're going to want to lock ourselves in for a second, all right? Reason being, I'm going to want to calm myself down. I'm going to want to do what I did previously. I'm going to gather them on a corner, okay? I'm actually going to gather them over here because I'm going to open this door. Wait for all of them to go over there. Oh, this may happen. This is an experience. It's not a bug. It's a feature, guys. And what we're going to do is we're going to lock. We're going to wait, and then we're going to gain all... Oh, we got wolves too. This is not good. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna try and get all the zombies inside here. Okay, here we go. I don't care about the wolves. I'm not worried about them right now. I can't I can't put my mind on them. I gotta get these zombies out of here. I may get one wolf or two in here too. Okay, we're running with wolves. I don't want to tell you too much because there are ways to dodge them. But you're gonna you're gonna wanna keep an eye on them, and when they are coming at you, you're gonna wanna put a change of direction out. Okay, so nothing's oh, I hear one. I'm changing direction. Right? I'm running with wolves. I'm changing direction. I just heard another one coming at me. Oh god, a tree. Ooh, runs with wolves. I'm out of stamina. I'm changing direction. I heard one coming. Right, I'm keeping an eye. I'm changing direction. He's gonna lunge at me right now. I'm waiting. I'm changing direction. Oh my god, there's blood everywhere. Okay, but we got hit. That's fine. That's fine. Another one. I'm changing direction. I need to get inside. I need to get inside. Any sort of structure works here. Anything. This works. Boom. I'm safe. We took a lot of zombie hits. We took a lot of wolf hits there. By one, by a lot, I mean one. But we're going to bandage this up. All right. There we go. The bleed is gone. Now, I could sit here and melee these wolves. My thought with wolves is they are going to be on you. And if you can, you can punch them all if you have a good circumstance to do that. But I say shoot these things. Whenever you're shooting wolves, it'll take one big boy bullet or like three small boy bullets. Make sure I'm not wasting my ammo. Once I've killed three, I don't care anymore. I am sitting here. Zombies are going to aggro. I'm going to go ahead and lay prone. So, wolf packs come in great numbers. Okay? Sometimes up to like five or six. I don't know. But they come in a, lo a lot of numbers. And what happens is when you kill three wolves of the wolf pack, no matter the number, the other wolves get intimidated by it and they run off in a random direction. Normally, if the wolves come around and find you again... They will re-aggro on you at a later time. Maybe even gathering other wolves. I don't know if that is something that happens or not. But it feels that way sometimes. Um, so it doesn't mean that those wolves despawn from the map. They're roaming now. They're just out there. Okay, looks like we have one zombie here. But I just shot. So I'm in a, a terrible spot. I want to make sure to get this done as fast as possible. And ultimately, if someone did see me... And is looking down on me. Heard me. F saw me run from the heli. Saw this. I can't do anything about that. All I can do is try and manage my situation the best I can. I'm making sure that I'm killing these wolves. Not out in the open. I'm making sure that I'm in a sort of protected state. While I'm cutting them up. Even if it's a small area. I'm making sure that I have cover nearby. When I'm making myself vulnerable like right now. And I'm doing my best to make sure. That I have... I have protection from a bullet, which is this armor here. Now, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to, knowing that I shot a bullet over there, I'm going to run out this way, trying to avoid people seeing me on the exit. And then what does that entail? That entails not running in the open. Our eye is going to draw to things in the open that are moving. An apple. It involves staying from cover to cover, even if that's visual cover like we talked about previously. 
and it involves us getting the hell out of Dodge. Because I want to cook this food, mainly because I took a little bit of damage there, and I want to make sure as I heal up that my nutrients and my water are full. So my healing process happens as smoothly as possible without illness or anything like that. And I also don't want to get sniped. So now, I'm out of real line of sight of the area, but I just ran through a field. Something I recommend, once you are completely out of vision of the area you ran through, I recommend looping back under cover. Notice how I can't be seen here. And just surveying the area. Let's say someone was on the opposite side of this, staring at me as I ran across. Oftentimes what people do is they wait until you're out of vision and then they run trying to trace you so that they can't be seen back. So something that I like to do is I like to loop back around and get eyes on the situation where I just was. Now, someone could be down to the right and that may sneak up on me there, but this is a pretty good spot to survey. So it doesn't look like anything's here. No one's on the heli. So we're gonna go ahead and push out. The heli crash was, as we call on the streets, guys, that's hot trash. Sometimes you get heli crashes with, um, so this is what I was saying earlier. It, it is guaranteed on helis to have at least one gun spawn. What does that mean? That means there's gonna be one spawn of a weapon related to the heli crashes. Normally, this means like a foul, an SVD, uh, some sort of like high tier weapon, but it also can mean that your roll of the dice, you get a flare gun. So your weapon spawn could literally be a flare gun. Is that toxic zone? Ah, oh, that's where I was trying to go. All right, we're not going there now. We're going a little bit north. I was trying to go to Pavlovo because I feel like it's a very underused location, but we'll go to Zelen. I think Zelen will be good. We're almost guaranteed a firefight there as well. Um, we have very little ammo. Maybe I cook in Pavlovo and then I move out. But it could be a flare gun, or as we saw in that heli crash right there, it could also be a 1911, an FNX pistol. Um, what, what else? A FAMAS mag, a foul butt stock, right? There wasn't like anything usable, like of a high tier, but there were a bunch of like guns and gun related things. Also saw a ghillie, a back ghillie. So I could have taken my backpack off, which I'm I'm not really interested in. It's not for me. But if you guys wanted to back there, you could have taken your backpack off and gotten that ghillie if this was you. And check it out. Because I blocked all 3,000 of the zombie attacks, now my HP is back to full. Now, it's, it's probably at like 95%. It's really close to full. Not quite 100% there. Um, I also want to talk about this. I think... At its core, I've gotten good at this particular thing that I'm going to explain. And it's it's what I think can sometimes set apart players. What I said earlier about controlling the interaction. right? We want to be the first one to see someone so that we have an opportunity to engage with them via comms. Or in this playthrough, if I see someone, right, via bullets. Now... What that comes down to is seeing them first. Now, you can look around frantically all the time and sure, you may see someone. What we are looking for is we are looking for two... What I am looking for when I'm scanning is I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for color difference. So when I'm looking out here, I see a white blob or I see a dark black, like an unnaturally dark black. Or I see a a red or a blue, right? A lime green. Like if I see a bright color, that's what my eye needs to be. I need to be putting in my mind. I'm looking for a color. I'm not looking for a person when I zoom in right now. I'm looking for a little tiny color change so my brain can process, oh, look it, something is different there, right? Now where I'm at right now, I need to, I want to cook this food, but I'm actually going to push into the lens first. I'm going to push cook the food afterwards. Cause I'm white right now and I, and I want, I want to talk about those things, but I'm looking for those color changes. And alongside that, what I'm doing is I'm zooming into an area and I'm not like frantically, like moving my mouse. 
I'm zooming into an area and holding still. Because if someone moves when the mouse is still, I'm going to notice that movement versus when I'm moving like this. It doesn't allow my brain to process, oh, something is different and 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 moving. All I see is that my whole screen is moving. What I want to do is I want to be on the swivel, checking an area. Like, I'm going to come over these trees right now. I'll give you an example. I'm checking here. I may be moving, but I'm keeping my mouse steady. So as for me to keep all the trees kind of stagnant almost, like they are moving with my movements. If something moved like left or right, Blitzkrieg through there, it'd be really, really not too much of a stretch to say that my brain would be able to process that that thing is different from the other things that are moving all together, like in unison. It's like you're looking out the window and all the trees are waving. And then one tree is just waving the opposite direction. You're like, yo, God, something's wrong. You need to get down here. There's a glitch. It's a simulation. So th that's just something to think about there. Okay, so we're over Zelen here. This mountainside that I'm on is incredibly dangerous. So I, I should really not be here ultimately. But we're going to go ahead and get eyes into Zelen. So we're going to look into the military compound here. And see if we see any movement. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm, I'm trying to find a spot where I'm not going to be seen from way down there. I'm trying to get eyes inside and gauge whether or not there are people there. Now, I don't see any zombies right away. This is not a good spot. And I'm really low on ammo, so fighting is going to be pretty tough for me right now as it is. This could be a good spot. I just feel like people are always looking at this tree line, so... Now, something you can also do is take your scope off your gun and put it in your hands and left click. And it will it will hold it steady so it doesn't shake like that. But I have binoculars right now, so I could I could use that. And I'm just gonna wanna keep eyes down. I see zombies right over here. I don't know how long they've been there. Before, if I was really far away and I zoomed in on it, I probably should have checked in retrospect. But if I zoomed in and I didn't see any zombies, that'd be a good sign that, that no one was there right now. But normally what I like to do, if, if especially as a beginner, I would recommend, is spend three to five minutes overlooking. But make sure when you transfer spots, like right now I'm moving somewhere else to get another look into the compound. Make sure you're not doing that on the edge of the tree line. Notice how I'm like a little bit back. I'm not front and center able to be seen because just like I said earlier when you were when I told you guys to scan the area, we our brain naturally attracts to that front. I've had a couple people camp inside of the fire station on official. I think people think it's strong. But it's really weak. Please don't go in there, guys. I don't see anybody. I'm going to push in there. I'm, I'm going to push in there just because I think someone may catch us off guard. And I think that'd be better. Because because I, I believe a lot of us are probably the person getting shot at more than the person getting doing the initial shot. So I think it's important that we maybe get surprised here. Let's just push through this field. Very bad spot. Right? If... If I was on survival mode, I would push over that hill and through that with all that cover over there. This is just an open field. Can be sniped from a million different angles. Really bad position. Terrible place to do this at. Highly intelligent player. Good thing you guys are watching this guide, huh? Okay, we're going to push in here. And first thing I'm going to try and do, because I just crossed that big field that's quite suspect, right? I'm going to try and lose myself. Like, be lost. So if someone was looking down, I just want to be lost. I don't want them to know where I'm at anymore if they were watching from any angle. I want to lo lower the chances that they still have eyes on me. Constantly checking high points like the fire station. It's 
zombies are aggroed, I gotta go. Let's go. So, there was an ant. There was a zombie right there just standing in front of the door. What does that tell you? What do you think? Well, for me, it tells me that this is probably safe. Okay? There could have been someone back here and I would have swallowed my words immediately. But that zombie standing at the door, it's like... The chance that someone's in here and the door's open and that zombie's just standing there is very unlikely. Now, when I'm looting around here, I am making sure that... I am not going into those skinny barracks. It's my personal opinion that new players should avoid the skinny barracks at all costs. Now, as you see here, just trying to play player here. As you see here, the buildings surrounding the military compound are even having military loot. A full-blown play carrier in here, so with patches. So someone is someone is probably here with the play carrier right now. Looks like my glove broke, or my knife broke, sorry. I have to be on my caution. I'm mainly looking for 7.62 ammo because I need to have something to sustain the, a fight. Everything is open back here, so people are probably either here or have just been here, or... I'm going to go ahead and just check the fire station peak. So I think I saw... Like a dark color in the top there. <coughs> nope. Right, so I'm just using this building one to let the zombies cool down. So they're not freaking out. And then also just to just to supervise the area. I'm just trying to look look out. Um, notice how I'm not trying to stay in the same spot too much. I'm like maybe spending half a second stuttering and moving again. But I'm always holding that mouse steady, trying to get the best possible look at my surroundings. Alright, so... Whoever was just here did... Oh, they saw me in the window here. I was gonna say, someone else just got aggroed. We got violence. I have three bullets to my SK, so I essentially have to be perfect in this fight. Whenever it happens. But I expect people to be here. I would say, in this situation, too... Another play carrier here. Wow. In this situation, killing zombies is not a bad play either. Especially I have an SK. 7.62 is incredibly common on zombies. So I could I could even I could even, technically speaking, could fight some of these guys. I'll do it. Just in case. Just to show you that we have potential. Plus I want this hat. If I did have that gun, obviously. A couple Mosin rounds. I'm gonna go across here. So whoever's here probably has a plate carrier. That's one thing that we can deduce because I've seen like three plate carriers so far. They may even be in a group. And they've opened everything back here. I think they're gone. Like I do not believe that they are still here, but I'm gonna just play very cautiously. Knowing that my survival is more important than any loot I may find in this location. I keep thinking I'm seeing someone in the tower, but I don't believe I am. So I'm letting the zombies aggro up here. Oh god. That's not good. I do not want to bleed right now. Boom. Alright, so we're gonna go try and loot some goodies here. See what I can find. One thing I never wanna do, I wanna avoid at all times having to jump over anything. So I don't wanna have to vault up, I don't wanna have to I don't wanna have to full jump up, none of that. 
Checking corners, checking corners. I don't believe. I think I'm good here, but I still have to check everything. Yeah, I'm right behind somebody. Because there's no, like, loot loot. My knife just broke, so I'm going to grab another one here. I'm going to go out into the cargo. I'm going to go out here at train yard. Normally find goodies out here. I always, once again, being cautious of the high point. I'm trying to make sure I'm safe from this uh, tower over here. Boom! Four more bullets. That's all we needed. Now we got a little fight in us. Someone's definitely here. Baseball is not a military item. So it has been here. My ball. So it's a military zone. So even these... These guys right here are going to spawn military stuff. Uh, they dropped the... Okay, so they have something stronger than a BK now. So what I say? We don't want to vault up anything. We also don't want to fall off anything. Like, over there, I had an opportunity to do a small fall down, right? Just a tiny little... Oh, wow, that's, uh... That's good. We'll take that. And while I'm looting, not just standing still on top of it. Kind of circling. Making sure I'm not a, a still target. Once again, I think a military... Not a military spawn, so... Probably players once again. I want that. Can't tell if it's a stenag or what it is, but I know I want it. So I have to jump up. So I'm jumping up on this side. So I'm a little bit less exposed. Uh, AP rounds. And that is more 308 ammo for me. So I just fell down. It, it like stops me for a second. I have that. It's really bad. You never, you want to avoid that at all costs. And how you do that normally is by jumping. Ooh, is that 7.62? Nope. Jumping as you jump, as you fall off something right before. And that'll allow you to kind of have not only a motion to your fall, but also will allow you a sort of uh, a, a movement that is harder to trace with a gun. So we're going to get out of this town. Now, I could go through the center of the town over there, but I just I came for all that military stuff and we just got all that. So I'm not going to risk putting myself at exposure of the center of the town, and I'm just going to trace out. I'm just going to find a way out of here. Now, this is the heli highway that I previously talked to you guys about here. But I don't want to just run through the field, obviously, to get over there. I want to try and find something that reduces visibility. We have an apple orchard here. I'm going to move through this to the north. Ah. Guys, I have had a crazy, crazy week here. Just a break off. I know I don't haven't said anything personal about me, but it means a lot. You guys watching, especially like during this time, my mom's in and out of the hospital. Um, so it's it's been quite treacherous. She's doing okay. Um, so if you guys got a parent that maybe you don't talk to or you do talk to, give them some love for me. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's just been a, a crazy time, and to have so much love, to have so many of you guys just showing vibes to the channel and saying it's helping you man it's like that's all i want i just want to help some people have fun with this thing that i enjoy very much so i'm super appreciative of all of you guys uh being willing to partake in that adventure with me but yeah back to the action here okay if you look on i survive this is saznovka i believe over to my right here this is the same area that I was with Harry when I was playing with him the other day. We were over here by Sazanovka. And something that I want you to think about is 
helicopter crashes are like like a gift into the edge of the map like the furthest military loot you can get helicopter crashes are like a quick access to that mega loot right so ultimately they are as far as progressing inland and not quite being all the way at the in game loot and I'm like on my way to it sorry finding heli crashes are like the biggest gift you can really come across as you are pushing deeper into the map Now, I'm going to continue to push through here, but back in the day, this was the spot where I would come when I was looking to get geared fast with high-end gear. I would run around Green Mountain, all sides of Green Mountain, and I'd run up to La Patino as well, which maybe we'll, maybe we'll do something like that here. But I have a big field here, so I'm going to get in this tree line. I'm going to go ahead and take a peek over it. Most importantly, again, while I'm transferring through the tree line, I am not on the edge of the tree line. I am in the tree line. Like the, or in the trees, sorry. Away from the tree line. Looks like I'm yellow. A lot of people, once again, say, don't eat food until you're red, but I'm of the camp of eat all your food, because if someone kills you, they just got all your food. So we're gonna go ahead and eat these beans that we found on that zombie back there. Get us right back into white. I still have all that food to cook. And once again, in the previous video, we kind of talked about good spots versus bad spots to cook. So I'm, I'm not keen to, to go ahead and cook this meat. I really would like to not and do other stuff this video. Wait a second. Is that a down tree there? No. It's an actual down tree. Checking the tree line here. I'm going to push up. because All of this spot, I can't really know if someone's pushing to my left. So I'm going to get a little bit further this way. Don't see any heli crashes. So if I was looking at the map right now, I would essentially see a couple options for progression. I could go into Green Mountain here. I could push north, straight north for, uh, for Resnick and and Northwest Airfield. Uh, we did Mishkino last time, so I'm gonna kind of guide away from that. Let's go. Let's go north. We're gonna go straight north. We're gonna head to BMC, which is honestly a nightmare, and I will probably meet my end there but we're gonna head that way i think of all the military bases i think vmc is the least safe and the least uh the smallest payout as well i would say now it's a big it's a big ass tree line here so i'm gonna go ahead and scope out make sure no one's camping the base of the tree line and now i'm gonna push You can't watch everything. You can't, like, to get loot in Daisy, it's not always going to be the same thing. So, there, sure, there are loot paths that I can show you, and, like, this is the way that you can get to the loot path. But in reality, you may go to a spot and see a group of five running around in there, and you only have a spear that you made. You're not going to run in there, <laughs> you know? So, sometimes the game will force us into a position where we have to do something outside of outside of what we want. And normally what, what matters in those situations is how well you prepped before that moment. Because if you're if you're hanging on to the edge of life and you get somewhere and you're really putting all your eggs in that basket that that there's not five guys in that town and then you get there and there's five guys you're in a rough spot, right? That's a tough, tough place to be. Yo, I'm going to stop right now and make sure that my mic is recording. Because that member, guys, the last time I did this. Let me make sure. One second. All right. It's working. We're good. I think I'm at pistol. 
Pistoshka. Just a little bit to my left, Pistoshka. Now, there are a lot of places on the map that will be labeled military, and they will have military stuff in them. One of them is this Saznovka military. Um, but let's say you were looking for a plate carrier. In general, you're not going to find it at a checkpoint, right? Uh, when I get up here, you'll kind of see what I mean. Like, this is, this is a military location, but it's not a military base. So when navigating armor, like look at, is that a is that a military? You know, you know what I mean? Yes, there is military there, but is that like like Zelen, which we just went to, where we found a bunch of plate carriers? No. So I, if you're looking for armor, you're not gonna find it somewhere here, like here normally. You're gonna have to push somewhere that's a more established military compound with uh, normally more uh, Zed spawns, and then you're gonna have to try and find it there. Now, I have literally had zero luck every time I've ever went in here through many years of playing. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just, just test it one more time, baby. We're just gonna throw it to the ringer one more time. Just one more game. See a lot of Zeds. So, see how there's a million Zeds, but nothing to lock them in? No, we're not trying it. Unintelligent. If all the Zeds were on the other side, maybe we check it. But sometimes, you know, the risk isn't worth the reward. And uh, ultimately, if we don't have some risk, we will never be rewarded. So, juggling that is something that you should always, like, have your own sort of gauge for. Little airdrop, little air sound like. Me personally, military compounds that don't have doors are just, in general for me, a no-go. I could have jumped up on a vehicle there, which a lot of players will reference. Like, well, there's a there's a Humvee there. You could jump up on it. Yeah, but then I'm sitting on top of a Humvee at a military compound. So, something I recommend is especially for new players if you look at a military spot or you look at a location and there's a bunch of zeds near a building or something and that building and there's no doors like those are only tents back there no doors on this just just avoid it you don't i get that finding the next location sometimes for new players can feel very scary like you don't know when the next piece of food is going to come so looting every little thing that you see is really important but at the same time fighting six zombies five zombies which i could have at that last last complex i could have fought them slow i could have pulled them out one by one but then i'm pulling them out in the middle of a field with no cover once again as i said one by one and fighting them does that sound favorable for me no and what i'm looking for as a survivalist as someone who's trying to cling on to my life right the core of what i'm looking for is safety i'm trying to look for secure situations to advance my way through the game and as you get more and more comfortable at navigating the different elements of the game you'll your gauge for aggression will grow and i'm a i'm a really aggressive player i would say quite cerebral i would say more cerebral than aggressive but even still i had to manage all those zombies back there right my i'm like okay there's wolves behind me i gotta get this so i ran in and had to fight wolves and zombies at the same time not ideal so your gauge is gonna get grow stronger you're gonna grow more confident as you play more and that's just natural so in the beginning if you see something and it feels daunting from the outside what I recommend is skip it. Go on to something else. Put your priority list at like number one is your safety. Number two is your safety. Number three is your safety. And then after that, whatever the hell you want. You know what I mean? That's how that's how I believe new players should be navigating the game. Now this is Pistoshka. This is a sort of 
how do I say? This sort of middle hub for for a lot of players advancing far into the map. We're pretty much at a spot where a lot of advanced players will be using this to come back down to the south. And this particular hill that I'm on is like really well known for being dangerous and having snipers in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to displace myself. And try and get eyes into the town off the center, off the front tree line. And at an angle that allows me to see a lot. Seems reasonable right here. Doesn't look like I really have an opportunity to see much unless I put myself at a little bit of an aggressive position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find one of these trees. But notice I'm not running across the field like in the front over there towards the houses, towards my tree. I'm trying to get out of the field of view of the buildings and then I'm going to the trees. Right, do you get what I'm saying, guys? I'm making sure that there is as little chance as possible that someone is able to read where I'm going to be. Because someone could already know where I'm at. My ability to move around and circumvent them being able to predict my next movement is comes up to how I position myself and nothing else. We're going to push. I'm going to push through this. I don't need any food. I'm looking specifically for military compounds right now. I have a bunch of food on me. I have ammo. I have guns. We're trying to advance. And all those zombies seem really bored like they've been staying in the same spot for three years. So I'm just going to go ahead and aggro push this. W for the win. <clears throat> I feel like my voice is going a little bit. It's kind of hot. It's kind of making me sound rugged for this one. All right, but here we go. We're approaching the field again. I'm making sure that I'm not exposing myself too much. I'm trying to stay in some cover. And I'm going to check over the field, make sure everything's Gucci. And then we're going to try and find a safe push across. See, now I know this area, and I know that there is really no safe push across, but if we were looking at this, I wouldn't want to push through here. I'd want to find some semblance of cover, like we've talked about. So I'm going to go up here to these houses. Looks like there's a lot of zombies right there, so I'm going to try and not aggro them as I run by. Now, I am on official servers right now. I tried to get a server with full pop. It's 58 of 60 when I joined. And it's honestly during the best time of the day. It's super clear, too. All right, we're going to try BMC. Why? Because I think BMC is probably the most treacherous location anyone's going to come across in this, in this entire map. Now... BMC has a tree line that, um, or river, sorry, a creek that leads out of it to the west that you can use to get in. But at its core, it's it's essentially a flat military base surrounded by fields with a sniper tower on the opposite side. It's just a giant mound. We'll be seeing it here pretty soon. <clears throat> Now, whenever you're approaching something from afar that you feel vulnerable at, the best thing you can do is get as close as possible and just scan the area. Figure out anything. Secure, like, one location. 
Okay, that's secured. That's halfway secure because I can't see in the buildings. So I'm going to run here. Thought that zombie was a dude. Gave me a panic attack. <clears throat> this field is also a hub for heli crashes, so I'm kind of taking you through the heli, heli heaven, if you will. Tell me that's ammo for my SK. Oh my goodness. That's a wild world. Looks like I got some aggro here. I'm just going to put him inside. Wow. Oh my god. What are the chances that he take my last bandage? Made me bleed. That's like, I think I'm out of bandages now. Yeah, I have no bandages, so I'm going to need this alcohol tincture. It's going to be very important to me. I'm going to try and find some rags here. No rags. That's a tough play. Do you know how unlucky that is? <laughs> That's insanely unlucky. I love it. Okay. So now I need to get rags. At its, at its core, though, if I end up fighting someone, I'm in it for the blood. Uh, the only chance that they make me bleed and not die is if it's a sniper battle. But I'm going to push up towards Resnick, Just moving tree to tree here. And scanning this hill. Because I either want to completely ignore this hill or I want to dominate that hill. I have two choices there. I'm going to make sure I don't have a... Okay. Alright, we're going to go left. I should have already been on this tree line, but it's all good. So I'm in the middle of a field. Do you think I'm going to run into someone close quarters now? Right now? No. So I have my sniper in my hands. And then as soon as I get into that that uh, creek line up here, you're going to notice I'm probably going to pull out my SK and then bounce back and forth. I'm always having whatever gun feels more likely to be at play. Like right here. Okay, there's some bushes close. I pulled out my SK just in case someone was in here. And then I'm like, okay, back to the sniper because if someone is... In this tree line here. Alright, we're going for it. Alright, so we made it into the tree line. Now... Obviously, I'm keeping eyes forward, but this is an important time to talk about like inclines and declines. So the land is like slanted down. It makes like a little valley here, a trench. These are the most fortunate and unfortunate places to be. <clears throat> it's two sided, right? <clears throat> One side is people can't see me over here and people can't see me over there. The other side is if someone comes up. I am essentially in this trench and they only have to worry about that. So <clears throat> it's important that we use these, but we use them intelligently. Like right here, if someone comes up from the left, I'm stuck in a trench. I'm like shot down in a valley with no real hope for survival at that point. Obviously I can outplay them, maybe maybe shoot them before they get me, but so I'm checking the tower there. Um, back to my SK. Ready to fight up close. Sorry, the mountain there. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and take the mountain. Haven't seen anyone up there. There may be someone up there. I don't know. But it's going to allow us to do exactly what we did with the helicopter earlier. It's going to allow us to gauge and picture the circumstance that's ahead.
I'm so stressed. I hate this mountain. <clears throat> but alas, here we are. Okay. Weapon cleaning kit. Sick. See a zombie there? And we're going in. Now I know, at least I believe <laughs> in my heart that no one's on that hill. There's really no reason in my mind that someone would be anywhere except for those areas that I just walked through. I obviously could have checked the whole hill. It would have been probably the play, but I, I'm trying to get a little aggro here. Put myself in some compromising positions. Also, just so we could think about and talk about positioning overall. And I'm going into this military compound. It is incredibly crucial that I constantly have a thought for cover on my mind and that I constantly am thinking about where players might be. All right, we already checked the hill. Now, as I'm coming through this, where players might be, where players might be, might be someone in the corner here. Nope. Where players might be. Hmm. Zombie here, tough. Maybe I could not fight this guy. Some ammo. Can't bleed, right? So I'm hearing a hundred zombies right now. I need a bandage, like, immediately. So I am actually going to... Hmm. I'm actually going to push in here kind of aggressively. So I want to find a shirt. A lot of those mags. I want to find a shirt so I can get some bandages so I don't die to blood loss, right? So someone's been here, right? All doors closed. Seems pretty suspect and it's... the hell dude all the things I just said times a million Boom. so we got this guy dead I need to first he's got it all dude this guy is Oh, bro, he's sad. Dude, didn't hear him respond, though. He was AFK. Oh, my God. No lockpick, though. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, that's unfortunate. This guy is bumming right now. Sorry, brother. But notice, this guy is geared. Okay? He has all kinds of stuff. You know what he doesn't have? Armor absolute insanity like I don't doubt that there's armor in this compound that he is in right now right but now all of his stuff is mine why because we stayed on our P's and Q's I paid attention to my surroundings right I told you guys as I'm walking in I'm like something tells me you know what I mean something tells me and now I got a bunch of gear When I peeked that first corner, I'm amazed he took that first shot. I thought I thought I shot him in like the ribs. But now, as I said previously, whenever we shoot, especially in a military compound, what do you guys think? Is this enough gear? Do you think? Uh yeah, I would say so. So I should not spend any more time in here than I already am. He got my bandage situation organized. He got Tetra for me. He got everything. So why do I why would I need to stay here? Right? The longer I'm here, the more dangerous it is for my for myself. Could have been could have not been alone as well. So I have to pay attention, make sure that there's not other homies coming. But I've already shot. Shooting again, not the biggest issue. If I'm moving, if I was at my door and that zombie was there, I would not want to shoot. Right? 
But because I'm already in motion, I'm out of the situation. I'm moving on. I'm getting out of there. I am able to shoot because people are going to chase where that shot was. They're not going, and unless they're right on top of me right now, which they very well may be, but unless they're right on top of me right now, them, them chasing is irrelevant, right? Because I am already gone, and they're going to be looking around, playing cautious around that area for quite some time. So I almost say on your exit, shooting is good so long as you think someone, you haven't wasted too much time, okay? Insanity though that guy just had two MBDs. I feel terrible. He probably really cares about all this stuff But it's okay But notice what did it come down to it came down to him being afk at his computer one But if it was a real firefight I'm gonna be honest with you guys in my personal opinion. It's very likely. I'm killing that guy. Why? Because I have armor He would have shot this he maybe hit me twice Maybe put me down to red or something maybe even knocked me unconscious all I really had to do was hit him in the chest once. My first shot, I think, hit him in the leg. Maybe. I don't know. We're going to pretend they were all headshots. But it came down to, or it would have come down to, who had the armor on. Now, where did that guy find MVGs? He probably found that at a heli crash. So I think I just heard someone in that bush. Nope. So notice how I didn't jump over the gate. I didn't do a vault. I walked back around. Now, while I got the gun, I guess I could kind of talk to you about it. The M16 is a good gun. Um, people always say what to use, burst or single fire. I always say use whatever you're comfortable with. But I think burst is way stronger up close because it allows you to shoot three at one. And three bullets are better than one. You know what I mean? So I'm moving up. Keep in mind, I'm in cover. I'm at least on visible cover at all times. I'm always at least blocking some chance of vision that they may have on me. Also pretty scared or pretty aware that someone may be over here in this field because I just shot there. They could be pushing from any number of directions towards that. So I have to keep my eyes like draw direct lines from where I shot to where I where I think people may be. So if someone was right here, they could come literally right here to go to where I shot the bullets. So I have to be cautious of that. But if they were up there, where would they be? They'd probably be somewhere right there, right there, right there. Maybe to my right here. How funny. The poor guy. He's just sitting. He had his gun aimed. I don't know. Did he? I don't know. I, my brain is... I don't even remember. It's wild that he's just sitting there, though. Alright, so I'm approaching Northwest Airfield here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and log out. Up here. But I think... A lot of the things we talked about today are probably some of the most important things beyond obviously all those fundamentals that we have previously kind of shared. But I think being conscious of how we are positioned is of the utmost importance. Making sure that where we are located is intelligent in, in respect to how many places can see where I'm located. <laughs> And as you push forward, you're going to learn more and more about how to sort of navigate terrain and navigate different locations that maybe you're unfamiliar with. But once again, thank you all so much. I hope this helped you. I think a lot of the information we went over here.